Privileged Life. My name is Nancy Williams and I'm your hostess. This is where we look at some of the wonderful everyday privileges God has given us and thank Him for these great gifts. Last week, my husband celebrated 25 years at his office and that's a pretty remarkable achievement to stay in one workplace for all that time. So I want to do something very special to celebrate with him because he is my hero. And I felt like this really called for pie. My signature pie is peach blueberry. And I wish I could take credit for the recipe, but it belonged to a little lady named Betty Odom who lived in Beulah Dean, North Carolina at Blueberry Heaven. She's since gone on to be with the Lord, but I'm very thankful that I got this recipe from her. We're gonna uh, go through the different steps of how to make it and I hope you'll enjoy walking along with me through this process. It's easier than it looks. Uh, it just takes a little bit of extra time and effort, but the results are so worth it, especially right now when you can get the fresh ingredients. So let's take a look together. So before we get started, I wanna show you what you need to get um, things ready for your pie crust. First of all, you're gonna need one and a half cups of flour, plain flour with a quarter cup of shortening, a quarter cup, which is a half stick of butter. It can be salted or unsalted, but you have to add salt if it is unsalted. Um, and in this case, I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then you also want a little pitcher of ice water to get started with. Um, I'll go through the amounts there in just a minute, but um, you'll also need a pastry uh, cutter that's right here. Or if you don't have one of these little nice gizmos, you can just use a wire whisk, as well as a rolling pin and a smooth surface. Always start with clean hands, but you wanna make sure that you don't use a heavily fragranced soap on your hands first because that might transfer into the dough. You want to cut the butter and shortening into the flour until each little morsel is about the size of green peas. Add just enough of this ice water to your mix here, the flour and shortening and butter, to start making the dough. Add more or less, just depending on what you need, to make up a good, nice Play-Doh type of texture. All right, my dough is ready. So I'm going to make sure my surface is clean and well floured before I start rolling it out. This recipe makes two pie crusts, so if you decide you want to uh, make two pies with just the bottom crust, or in this case, we're gonna use this recipe to make one pie with a lattice top crust. Before I start rolling it out, I'm going to divide my dough about, not quite two thirds to one third because I'm gonna need more of the dough for the bottom crust than I will for the lattice. So I'm gonna set this little extra third or so aside, and then I'm gonna use this to make this because I'm making a deep dish pie crust. You'll wanna roll it out as thinly as possible, but before you do, make sure it's nicely well shaped into sort of a round disc so that it will um, roll out more smoothly into a nice big circle. This is my grandmother's um, old uh, rolling pin, wooden rolling pin, and I love it. You can use just about any other type to do this, but this one seems to work very smoothly and nicely still. As you can see, it's getting a little bit squared and odd shaped, but we're gonna straighten that out in just a minute by cutting it into a nicer circle. Again, you wanna make sure your, flour, your surface stays well floured so it doesn't stick to it. And again, make it as thin as you possibly can so that you can have plenty of room for being around the edges, uh, making the fluting in just a minute. Fold it just like so into fourths, and then you can take your knife and turn it into a nicer, neater circle by just trimming off some of the excess dough. And I'm gonna save that and use that when I start rolling out the lattice top. All 
All right, I'm gonna just roll it one more time just to make sure I've got it nicely sized here. Okay, looks like it's gonna be a good one. To make the streusel, we're going to mix one half cup of, again, plain flour, along with a quarter cup of packed brown sugar with a half a cup of chopped pecans, and then a quarter cup, half stick, of slightly softened butter. We'll just mix this together with a fork until it's uh, all mashed up, nicely mixed together as a just very coarse topping. And now for the main filling, we have about four cups of peaches here. The most time consuming part of this recipe is actually peeling and slicing the, the peaches, but these are wonderful South Carolina peaches. I know everybody talks about Georgia peaches, but there's wonderful peaches to be found um, all throughout the South, including South Carolina and Arkansas. I'm gonna mix about four cups of these peaches with about two cups of blueberries. These are actually some that I froze from last year's picking at Blueberry Heaven. Then I'm going to add two tablespoons of tapioca. I'm gonna sprinkle this too with just a little bit of extra sugar. Those peaches were so sweet, they're not gonna need a lot of extra sugar. Then I'll stir it all up. The recipe calls for about two thirds of a cup of sugar, but I've already added a little bit of sugar to them, so I'm only just gonna sprinkle a little bit of just what I feel like looks right. In this case, it's probably about a quarter of a cup. So we'll stir it all together. The tapioca acts as a thickening agent, much like flour would, but I think it, it uh, adds a, a nice little uh, texture to the filling. As you can see, we've put the peaches and blueberries mix down in the bottom on top of that streusel topping, and then I took the other half that was left over of the topping and sprinkled it all over the top. All right, now here comes the really fun part. We're gonna make the lattice top. So here's the remaining pie dough that we had left over, that almost a third or so of it. And we're gonna roll this one out, again on a well-floured surface, in more of a rectangular oblong shape. Now take a sharp knife and start slicing um, strips into it, maybe about an inch or less in width. And then once you have the number of slices, which will be around 10 to 12. You'll divide that in half to make um, five, in this case it'll be 10, five strips for um, each direction of the lattice. I folded back my strips so I'd have more room to work with them. And I'm gonna start lying them, laying them, excuse me, across the pie like so spreading them out a little evenly. So as you can see, I'm gonna put five going one direction, and then I'll use five going another one. And then this is so very easy. You just simply take the alternating ones, pull it back like so, and we start laying the other ones across. Here goes the opposite layer. Pretty simple. Of course, you can use more dough if you wish and put them a little closer together, but this is usually plenty. See, pretty simple. Now let's trim up some of these rough edges just to make sure that we don't have a whole lot of excess dough around the edges to work with when I get ready to um, straighten this up. 
And I'm just going to roll these over to create a nice smooth edge that goes all the way around the edge of the pie plate. So now I've smoothed up all the edges here, I'm going to go around and crimp it. So you just take one finger on your right hand, two fingers just like this on your left, and you crimp it together around the edge just like that. Very easy and it makes for a really pretty crust. Might be a little bit rough looking, but the people who are going to be eating these pies will not care. They will just be enjoying what's in it. Now let's take some extra melted butter. There's no such thing as too much butter. This is always good. We're going to drizzle it um, onto the strips of lattice here of dough. And then you're going to sprinkle it with some extra sugar. Now you can use plain sugar for this, or in this case, I like to use turbinado sugar because it adds a nice little extra crunch. So we're just going to sprinkle some extra sugar over the top to um, let this brown with the crust. One last thing before we put it in the oven is that if you want to keep your edges from browning too much as it is being, uh, as the center is being set, you can add little pieces. It looks great. Pie number one has been in here just a little over an hour and I'm getting ready to take it out and here's pie number two still waiting. So it takes a little bit longer to bake when you've got more than one item in the oven. So here it is, yum! This will be a happy way for my husband to celebrate 25 years at his office today. If you'd like to try your hand at this recipe, you'll find it at lightbornecreative.com. That's L-I-G-H-T-B-O-U-R-N-E creative.com. That's my website, and you'll find it with today's blog, which is July 14th, 2020. I hope you give it a try, and I hope you'll consider following my posts. You'll see a small tab in the lower right-hand corner that will say Follow. And if you'll click on that and enter your email address, You'll receive an email message to confirm, and then you'll start receiving my blogs on a weekly basis. I hope you enjoy them. There aren't any Bible references for blueberries or peaches or pie, um, although Moses did say that the manna from heaven tasted like pastry when it was baked. So I did think that Psalm 1611 was a good reference, and here it has, here's how it goes. It's a prayer. You, Lord, will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Now the French translation of that is les délices éternelles, which is eternal delights. Sounds like something in heaven, doesn't it? Especially something from blueberry heaven. But um, I don't know if there will be pie in heaven, but it's certainly a bit of manna that we're getting to enjoy right now. So I hope that today you will find some opportunity to bless someone else with the gifts of your work, with the gifts of your handiwork. And I pray that you will find gratitude in your heart for all those wonderful everyday privileges like pie that we get to enjoy right here. Take care and have a wonderful day.